Hello and welcome to another Bushwhacker review. Today we are going to be taking a look at Brad Kosowski's Miller Lite Ford from 2013. After recording that review for the 2011 Brad Kosowski Dodge, I mentioned this car and said I should review it. So I did. <laughs> and this car is an interesting one to review because, as you know, in early 2013, Lionel kind of had some issues. <laughs> but we'll get to that later. So let's take a quick look at the box shop Brad Kosowski. Got a nice render of the car picture of Brad right there. Got a round of the car, new 2013 stock car, Brad Kozlowski, Penske Racing. So we had 4,000 of these things, Lionel Racing 20th Anniversary, 2013. Another render of the car, Penske Racing, Ford Product, another render of the car, all that good stuff down there. Here is the car itself. As you can see, this year they went to kind of more of a darker blue color. It looked a little better on the real car than it did on this car. I think that was probably why I said this was kind of my least favorite in the other view, because I just remember this die cast. And... I don't know, this die cast just made it look a little bit too dull for my taste. It just kind of looks like this like typical dark blue. I don't know. But you probably are noticing a few flaws of this car. Because <laughs> if you were collecting back then, you know, the 2013 was an ugly year for one twenty third for one twenty fourths early in the year. <laughs> just like 2014 was an ugly year for one sixty fourths. <laughs> well, let's do a quick 360 of the car, as usual. So we can angle this down a little more. So this was one of the. This is basically the debut car of the Gen 6 Ford Fusion. They air freighted this in early, so it was ready, and that was part one of their mistake. <laughs> and I just always like the metallic blue, where this is pretty much not metallic at all. <laughs> the real car did have a little bit more of a deep metallic blue to it, but this car just kind of gave it a regular blue. I don't know. Let's get down to sponsors on the hood. You have Miller Lite and Shell Pennzoil, Ford Fusion number two. Down the side, you have It's Miller Time, Discount Tire, and SKF. Snap on back there. On the C post, you have Carlisle. On the B post, you have Ford, Go Further, PPG, Bosch, and Mazak. Interestingly enough, they still kept the like glass, beer glass number two thing, but nothing's pouring into it on this car, so it just looks kind of random. <laughs> on the back, you have It's Miller Time number two and a big Ford logo. Nothing in the little molded Ford logo. There you can see what I'm talking about. Some people like have said, like, what molded Ford logo? I think they've removed it by now, but there you can see right there, you see there's actually like a molded Ford oval right there, but they never actually put anything in it. <laughs> Got worth on the C-Post. C-Post. Deck lid. See, this is number 2,462. Nothing on the roof, because Penske never wanted roof sponsors for some reason. Now, I'm not going to open this hood, because that is just part one of the problems with these cars. If you remember back in early 2013, they made the stupidest hood design they could possibly make. How do they know it was stupid? One, they did a video tutorial, and two, literally in the box of the car, they give you an instruction manual on how to open the car. It should not, look at this, there's no reason for it to be this hard. Like, why did you need to do it like this? Lift it up to part way to this angle, gently pull the hood out straight, raise the hood the rest of the way, lower the hood partially in the middle. <laughs> like, who thought this was a good idea? Luckily, they did change it near the end of the year, but I just don't know who in the hell thought that that was a good idea. It led to a lot of broken hoods, and that's why I don't even touch these hoods anymore, because I'm just worried I'm going to break things. I could say the end of the hood probably says, powered by Ford Miller Lite. <laughs> and it's got that engine detail. This is the first thing that went to the solid thing that everyone hated. Which, you know, there's the underside if you want to see that. Luckily, they decked they still did the obvious way and just, you know, had it openable or not. What the fuck? Really? This doesn't even open. Look at that. It, it will not open. There we go. What the fuck? Yeah, there's another beautiful quality control from Lionel. There's your typical fuel cell back there. Roof laps do in fact open. But now we can just get down to the problems with these early 2013 thirds. You can see there's one. These early 2013 vehicles had none of the manufacturer logos on either side of the windshield banner, and the windshield text was horrifically weird looking. You see, these cars just had a bunch of little flaws and stuff. You see, there's like, you know, a chip right there. You can see like a little bit of a scuff right there. And these stuff straight from the factory, straight from out of the box. A little bit of a scuff right there. The front's a little like messed up. They just had terrible quality control on these things. See, there's like, you know, some like bubbling on the paint. All throughout, you see this little chip right at the bottom of the glass right there. You can kind of see some of the bubbles and issues throughout the car. You know, it was just bad. 
You can't see it on this car because they're white, but a lot of times the like spokes of the wheels had like stress marks in them. It was an ugly time for diecast. If you want cars, I would not recommend getting 2013 standards because they were pretty bad if it's early in the year. If you want a 2013 car, your best bet is getting the Elites, because by the time they, they fixed a few things with the Elites, like it had the windshield banner with the actual logos on it, they fixed some of the issues. I don't know if it's really obvious on this car, but a lot of cars, these early 2013 Fords and Chevys, had the... The suspension was kind of jacked, so it was like sticking way off the ground the front, like the back would be like touch... I had a car where like the back of this side skirt was touching into the ground, and the left side skirt was like a half an inch off the ground. It was bad. Or another air you see on the hood is the hood pins, you see they're in an angle, where the real car, they were solid straight across the bottom. And that led to some weird, they ended up fixing that, but it led to some weird race wind die cast. <laughs> because they, a lot of the die cast on the render were still like this, so they, you know, paste the like hood pin tape around this, but then they fixed the hood. So you had hood pin tape like up here and like in here when the really the, the hood pins were like here, 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 and here. <laughs> it was really a terrible year. And it doesn't stop at the 124th, here's the 164th. Now you're probably asking yourself, why are there two? Because they re-released this to make it slightly more accurate, as you can see right here. They actually re-released this and gave it the manufacturer logos on either side of the windshield banner. Why? I don't know. Because I don't really think anything else is different, but you see that these early 2013s did have some quality control issues too. There's some like chipping and stuff on the car. Blue looks a little bit different too. Looks like a little bit lighter on the new car. I don't know if that's on purpose or not. But So, if you actually like this paint scheme, then I'm sorry for your loss. <laughs> now, this car even gets stranger. In 2014, they re-released this car again because it was meant to be the standard. But as you know, they went to the white car and never ran this blue car. So there's the 2014 version of this car that you can get probably very cheap. If you wanted just a little bit more like solid and accurate version of this car. <laughs> but also know that if you're an accuracy person, that car basically became a fantasy car for 2014 because it never ran a single time. <laughs> so, you know, this car is one big mess. I don't know if that's partly the reason that I just don't like this car as much. It's just all this issues that ran with this car and controversy that, you know, it just kind of made me obscure the vision of this car. But who knows? The fact this review is so freaking long should be enough of a telltale. <laughs> but if you want this car, it's not hard to get either way. Except if you really just want the paint team, I would kind of recommend the 2014 better. Because it's just, it's got the updated hood, all the little updated accuracy details. Although it never ran, it did run in 2013. I think the only difference is it has an Alliance Truck Parks logo on the quarter panel. So, I would recommend that. But, you know, either way, do what you want. I think that's pretty much all I have to say. This has been a review of Kurt Brad Kozlowski's 2013 Miller Lite Ford. Hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching.